Hi, this is Randy Finney with Red Side of the Chart, and today's Tuesday, November 22nd, 2016. Uh, time to do another update on the marijuana stocks, cannabis sector. I still think there's a tremendous long-term potential, and uh, as expected, uh, the run-up into the elections was uh, overdone. A uh, little optimistic. These stocks had gotten ahead of themselves, so you know, as I had warned about, uh, there was a good possibility of a sell-off, a buy the rumor, sell the news, and we've gotten that. Now we're you know, I did do a video after the elections. We already had one pullback, and a lot of these stocks are coming back to test those same support levels. I'm going to go through my watch list here one by one. I'll, I'll go in pretty quick order and just breeze over those stocks if I don't see uh, a lot of uh, key levels. But uh, this was one of my favorites. Uh, most of these are. That's why I have the watch list here. And I guys told you guys, if you're new to the site um, or new to the YouTube channel, my my approach with these cannabis stocks is take a shotgun approach. There are some that I do like better than others that have maybe a little more sound business model, a little better fundamentals, and you can overweight those positions. But for the most part, you keep your position sizes light. A lot of these are penny stocks, meaning they sell under a dollar. They're either pink sheet listed, uh, over the counter bulletin board stocks. They may trade on the you know the Canadian Venture Exchange or some other. Uh, so a lot of these are, are not very well established companies and there is a tremendous amount of risk. You can see here we're just starting out with AM, AMMJ and it's down 21% today and just in the last you know week or so since the elections last couple weeks, you know the stock's down 70%. Now that 70% drop follows a run of in just a couple months that that sucker ran up. 2,240%. You can see the pop-up box to the left. So 2,200% rally, uh, followed by a 70% correction. So if I have not impressed to this point uh, uh, enough that these guys are extremely volatile, don't put too much money or you will pull your hair out. You, will, you won't sleep at night. Um, so again, my strategy, I sprinkle a little cash in each of these names. I do it strategically, and I'm looking to add back here. Um, I've, I've mentioned in the, in the, uh, you know, the other videos before on the upside, what the resistance levels were, those former resistance levels, especially the ones that we've had reactions on then become support levels on pullbacks. So that's, that's the technical analysis. That's trading 101. You buy when you're long looking to buy a breakout, you wait for a break of support. I'm sorry, resistance, like these downtrend lines here. This is where we were buying AMJ back here. I uh, point out this breakout of these intersecting downtrend lines. And then what you do is you sell, you know, resistance uh, or price targets, and then you buy pullbacks to support if you like the longer term story in the stocks. And I still do. Now, before I get into it too much, I wanted to, uh, I made this clear in the trading room yesterday. Uh, for those of you that d don't frequent the trading room, um, I mentioned there's a new development in the sector, a potentially bearish development, and that is Donald Trump's, um, uh, he has chosen Jeff Sessions as the uh, U.S. Attorney General. Now, the Attorney General, I'll let you guys Google, I, and I, I strongly recommend you Google this. Look into it, Google that name. It sounds just as it spell or spelled just as it sounds, Jeff Sessions, Attorney General. Uh, Attorney General has a tremendous amount of power, probably one of the, well, undoubtedly, unarguably, one of the most uh, powerful positions in U.S. government is the uh, Attorney General, and he is very much anti-marijuana. He's made that very clear. Uh, he's old school, Reaganer, say no, just say no. Uh, marijuana to him is a very bad gateway drug, um, and uh, he does he has uh, direct oversight of the uh, FDA. So, uh, and the DEA, I should say. I'm sorry, the DEA, and uh, it's the DEA that has, um, you know. Uh, marijuana is still listed as a, a, a class one controlled substance. So there's there's a lot. Now, now where I'm going with this is this affects not only the U.S. Uh, Canadian uh, cannabis stocks, and a lot of these stocks have different business models. Remember, some grow cannabis, some do, uh, some distribute, some uh, some do all of the above, some do different things. There's vape companies in here. There's everything. There's there's the whole gamut of marijuana related stocks in my watch list. But you have a couple things that, you know, uh, Jeff Sessions as the attorney general can, can put a crimp in the sector. And that would be number one, the state is for the greater or lesser degree, look the other way. Marijuana is still uh, illegal uh, at the federal level, yet 
they've allowed these states to, to go ahead and, and, and approve it. Uh, that There's a potential that can be undone. I don't think that will happen. Trump was okay with the states doing their own thing. Um, and, you know, who knows? Anything's possible. We'll, we'll see what happens here. That's a possibility that's on the table. Then the other thing, a lot of the, some of my favorite uh, cannabis stocks are the Canadian uh, producers uh, like AC, BFF, that's still, you know, my, my favorite of the group and it's come in quite a bit lately and somebody asked well how does that impact the you know what does it matter what the U.S. is doing uh, the U.S. is a ginormous potential market for the Canadian producers the Can Canada's right across the borders we all know um, and you know if it ultimately and I, I think the trend was clearly heading towards legalization in the U.S. both at the state and federal level we see the states one after another approving both recreationally and uh, medically, and um, my guess it's only a matter of time, or was at the current rate we're going, before the uh, DEA li yeah, lightens up on the um, on on uh, their classification, um, and with marijuana being there as a, a controlled you know class one controlled substance right up there with co cocaine and heroin. So, all right, that's that's very important. I usually don't spend a lot of time talking about fundamentals. And so, again, what I think with the Canadian producers is um, the U.S. was a potential market in the future, I think, being priced into a lot of these, that whether it would take six months or two years from now, um, there'd probably be a good chance that we would see the federal government, you know, ease up on their restrictions and uh, then uh, possibly quite likely open up the uh, market to the Canadian producers. And so I think this is all being priced in right now. Um, there's been a lot of post election buzz and again this this um you know may impact the the sector as a whole regardless of where these companies are located all right that's uh quite a bit on the fundamentals but again important story something to monitor and um you know these stocks could come way back in if there's if they, especially if there starts to be some buzz that uh, uh the federal government's going to crack down on the states that have have uh, went ahead and legalized it. That would be just obviously the bottom would fall out in the sector. So I don't I don't think that's going to happen. That's just my opinion, one man's opinion. But let's look at the charts and and I'll tell you where to buy into these. And again, this is it could be the the buying opportunity of the century right now. A lot of these stocks have come back in. They have very constructive chart patterns, and that's why I'm doing this video. So you buy and. And that's what stops are for. You never become married to any one stock, any one sector, any one story, no matter how good the fundamentals are. Uh, so I'll, I'll run through these real quick. And AM, we'll start with AMMJ. Uh, these are all levels. You can see them up on this chart, 52 cents, and we're at 55 right now. That's where we stopped the other day. These levels were put here in advance, I believe, um, and we hit that level. The, the next and very solid support, this would be a golden buy zone if we get here, 33 cents. I'd say that because that was a key level before we had a reaction high. Uh, it acted as support all the way back here. We had these reactions here. So there's your buy levels. I would scale down from 52. I think it's a good buy here, just above that level, all the way down, um, adding to that 33 cent level and not below there. And your stop would be... You got to give these guys room because of these momentum overshoots, I call it. When a stock is falling very fast or going up near vertically, they tend to overshoot support and resistance levels. That means a temporary punch up through a resistance level and then prices come back in or on the downside if there's a lot of downward velocity or momentum in that stock it'll shoot through a support level only to snap back up there and close later that day or maybe over the next day or two. Um, so you know, it's it's I can't it's hard to give hard stops and that's why a lot of these aren't official trade ideas. Plus there's just too many. And typically I you know, as a rule, normally I avoid penny stocks, but I just think this is a you know, one of the best growth stories right now in the in the uh, stock market, and that's why I continue to do a lot of coverage on these stocks. So there it is. Uh there's your scale in zone as you can see. And um here, let me just highlight it here. This is what I'll try to do on these stocks. I'll just highlight these scale-in zones. So scale-in zone, and this would be, depending, you can have a stop just under there. But this this is where I really don't want to see the stock go below. I'll call it the 20 uh, cent level. So one, you know, 0.1987, round that up. That's about 20 cents a share. And that is defined by numerous reactions back here. Uh, that is a very solid support level, which should not give way. Uh, unless there's really something going on with this stock. All right, uh, next one up.
we'll go through these much faster. CVSI, this one I like the story on um, fundamentally, and uh, the chart was great. You know, it's had a heck of a run since August. You could, you know, another big run, 400 and almost 450 percent, but it's come back in almost almost that much. Uh, again, remember, you go up 450 percent. This one dropped 74. Um, you know, the way stocks work, if you put your money in a stock and you lose 50% from that point, you have to make 100% to get back to where you were. So, uh, you know, I, I threw a lot of caution out there to not chase these stocks before the election because they were ramped up. So anybody that bought here now at the top, you're down 73%. And so at this point, uh, I'll show you how math works. Now you have to do 281% to get back to where you were. So the longer you go down, this is why letting your stops run, there's no more sure way to financial ruin or a uh, end a career in trading to just you know hope and pray when you're in a position that's going to come back because that uh, takes a that's just how math works again you know you drop a stock from 100 to 50 dollars you don't have to make 50 cent percent to get back to where you were you have to now make 100 percent so in this case the stock dropped 73 percent you got to go up 280 just to get back to where it was um but with that being said, we're now down. This is a pretty significant support level here, about the 24 cent level. There's some bunch of reactions there, some reactions there. Um, you know, this was really a pretty important level, 34 cents. I'd want to see CVSI regain this level. Uh, there's a lot going on. You can see this is heavy profit taking, uh, big selling in the sector right now. But uh, again, you can step in here. You know, that stock hit a low about 26 cents cents a share today and, and set your stops not too far below and maybe start scaling in like I said the other thing besides taking a shotgun approach by spreading my money amongst many different names uh, you can also uh, scale into these stocks take little bits here right now if, if they go down a little bit more add a little more and then just don't add below those levels that look like the the final support level the final important support level uh, at some point this one really shouldn't go there's a reaction low I should have covered down here about 19 cents that one has no business going below 19 if it does especially on a closing basis you want to cut that one loose it may want to come back in here to down back test this downtrend line you had an uptrend line here that's already been taken out uh, so to draw it out here here's your here's your support area right here you have a couple support levels horizontal downtrend line and another horizontal level there and that was CVSI TRTC Terratech Corp uh, not looking good right here. We broke through a, a pretty significant support level. Uh, again, these are how my eyes see it. These a lot of these lines were already here before. Uh, you can see all the how this level has acted as support in the past. It acted as resistance back here, and we broke below it. Now there is at this point another reaction low right here. See that reaction low? Another reaction low right there with that candlestick, and some some levels there. So this one's actually a good buy or a buy right here, I should say. It's had the snot beat out of it like a, like most of these, and that's why I'm doing this video. This is when you want to buy. You didn't want to buy up here. That's that's the point I was trying to make. You don't want to buy after these extended runs into resistance, but you do want to buy pullbacks to support. And I know it's ugly, and right now nobody wants to buy these. Everybody's uh, once out because they see that it looks like the the bottom's falling out. And again, I suspect this is more than that post-election profit-taking, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news thing that I was talking about. I think this has a lot to do with smart money. You know, those who are there that are you know picking up the papers, reading the papers every day, and 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 know about Jeff Sessions uh, and what he had the potential he has to do to he could do to the marijuana sector. Um, that's, that's what I think we're seeing here. But again, he may, uh, you know, he may have a directive from his boss to back off. Um, and, uh, and, and if that's the case, then these are great buying opportunities. So here's another one, MCOA pullback to support right here. This is the three cent level. And, uh, you have a couple reactions, reaction there. You had a reaction high. I think that's a, an objective level to pull back. Here's another support level down around one and a half cents, so maybe a stop somewhere below that level. Again, ideally on a closing basis, at least a daily closing basis. APHQF, Afria, ascending price channel. We had a channel overshoot, f fell back within the channel. This is pretty solid support right here, about 250. 
and then if that goes 220 221 area and uh, things get really ugly in this stock this is a last straw critical support now I know it's quite a ways down there and again that's why you have to decide if you want to step in I, I don't see them coming all the way back down here um, I think this would be a good buy zone if it gets there and it may even hold support at the bottom of the channel which we're coming up on that uh, uptrend line right there CBIS, Cannabis Science, and uh, wow, you know, this was a, you have to go back on a two-day chart. You see this downtrend line, nice big symmetrical triangle. This one's had this series of these downtrend lines. You just go long on downtrend line breaks. It's that simple. And as I always said, I've been saying for months, I love this sector because even though a lot of the fundamentals on these stocks are very questionable, they trade very well to the technicals. These downtrend lines are all well-defined and each and every one you had an impulsive breakout coming in with high volume, impulsive price action, and it led to, to big rips. So you can sit here and trade this thing all day uh, on these trend line breaks. Now, right now, we don't have that. Right now, we're looking at a pullback. We've smashed through. This was a support level. We had a nice gap here, a couple reactions at uh, 0 0.0337 level. And uh, we have very solid support coming up here at the two, you know, two, two and a half cent share level. Uh, I'll highlight that for you. You can see uh, reactions back here. A lot of support. That level acted as support back here at that point in time. And um, I think that's a pretty solid level. <coughs> Okay, uh, sorry, I had a brief interruption there. I had to pause the video. So there is, uh, that's that's the level I would buy down to, and I wouldn't, I would, don't dig yourself in a hole, I wouldn't add. This thing wants to come in for a full back test of that downtrend line. It's going to come in at much lower levels. Uh, let me show you here. Uh, talking a, a potential move all the way down here. There is great support down there. There's a downtrend line that comes into play, but that's a big drop. So, uh, you know, if that happens, maybe we re revisit them there. So this is sort of my mindset right now, just to share it with you guys, is, you know, start scaling in now. We're coming up on some decent support levels. Like this is probably an overreaction, um, a combination of the, you know, the election, you know, sell the news, overbought conditions, profit taking, all that stuff. Jeff, Jeff Sessions um, as the new attorney general, all that good stuff that uh, it's not so good or may not be so good, but uh, we don't know that yet. Uh, so there's CBIS. All we can do is look at objective levels to buy and go from there. Here's one of the the only official trade ideas on the site as far as uh, cannabis stocks. Uh, you know, we've been in this one since 55 cents, recycled a few swing trades, but it's been a, a long-term trade. And I posted that day under the comment sections when I put the last update. I had the price target set at $3. And shortly after doing that, I was kicking myself because I usually don't pick round numbers. Round numbers what everybody looks at. And it got up there and I made mention that I was going to sell my shares, some of my shares. I took some profits out in the low 290s that day right there. It went up once uh, to 290 something. Uh, let's see. It went as high as 296, a little over 296. And then it had another thrust up that day that's where i started to unload because it just i saw this divergence forming and i knew that three dollars was a round number and the fact that they took a run at it and had a sharp pullback uh that's that's why i got out on that next thrust up and i still think it's going to get there i'm still keeping this one i still have plenty of shares um yes i did lighten up because i wanted to lighten up on the sector and on this particular stock but uh, it is still uh, has a lot of promise. This is one I like the fundamental story and um, the charts. You know, this, this they were pricing in that needed to have this pullback. And, of course, this is sympathy selling too, guys, by the way. I talk about all the time how birds of a feather flock together. In the cannabis sector, you're going to notice. Again, here's my watch list. What do you see today? This is the entire watch list of 29 stocks. We see two green. Here's the percentage gain or losses. Every other stock is red, and they're all down, almost all of them, double digits. Uh, tomorrow, you'll probably look at this list or another day in, in the next week or so here, and you're going to see almost all the stocks green. Um, that is, again, birds of a feather flock together. They're all going to move up and down um, as a sector. And those are some of the things I look at as to when to get in, when to get out. Right now, I'm seeing a lot of stocks pulling back to support. Here's ACBFF. 
uh, as I've mentioned, this would be your next objective buy entry. I believe I mentioned this downtrend line. This was a breakout here, a downtrend line I'd been watching on the daily chart. Breakout, impulsive candlestick, which confirms a breakout. Look at the volume on that breakout down there. Uh, actually, there was the breakout on high volume, followed through on higher volume the next day. Um, and now it's pulled back to that level. Former resistance, once broken, becomes support. It doesn't get any more objective than that. In fact, I'll probably end this video and, and uh, buy back some of those shares that I took out here the other day. Uh, TWMJF. Uh, oh, haven't marked all these charts up, but here we go. You can put a downtrend line right there. It's beautiful. Look at that stock right on downtrend line resistance. So you buy it there. There's also some horizontal support. See these two reactions, couple reactions there. So just below that you have support. So you buy it here, you can add down to 552, 553. Uh, and I wouldn't add below that. At that point, you want to be more concerned about stops. Uh, again, you got to give these guys big rooms, uh, big room on these uh, on the stops. If you're looking at this and you say, well, Randy, that is a drop of another 20%. If you can't allow a 20% stop loss on a trade like this, uh, then you, you, I tell you now, don't trade them. If you're trying to run tight stops, 3 4 5%, uh, even 10% on a stock that swings 20 30 40% in a day, uh, you're trading the wrong vehicles. I'm just telling you that right now. Just the day-to-day -day gyrations, even on an uptrend, will take you out with a you know 5 8% stop um, unless you happen to get it just at the right time. So swing trading these guys, you have to give it room. So what's a 20% stock if you're looking at a down or an upside profit potential of 135% just if it gets back to its recent highs? That's an excellent R to R risk reward. That's better than a five to one, almost a six to one RR risk to reward ratio. 20% loss for 140% um, gain. And uh, let's go on to the next one. MJNA, medical marijuana. Uh, um, coming up on support, had a support level here, but pretty decent support here. And uh, where I see that is these reactions right here. Reaction highs right there, uh, broke, Above that level, back tested at one, two, three candlesticks, actually four after taking it out, four consecutive candlestick uh, wicks, the bottom of those candles touch that level, or the candlestick shadows, I should say, and now that is uh, support, and that is 0 0.0788, call it, uh, you want to step in around the eight cent level probably, uh, a little bit above that, maybe even a little higher than that. And then you have an excellent level here, numerous reactions all the way here. And that's about the six cent level. So you can scale down on this one all the way to six cents. Um, but I wouldn't add below that because that level should not get give way. If it does, things don't look good. There's monster support down here, but that's quite a bit lower. And I would rather stop out you know, below there, see if the stock can bottom and base here and hold that level and you can always get back in. Okay, next one up, CBDS Cannabis, Sept Cannabis Sativa. And this one looks nice, coming up on uh, some decent supports. So you have all these reactions back here, reaction here, reaction here. Uh, so those those dual lines, that's a support zone. I like the fact it comes in very well with this downtrend line. Look, we already had one reaction on that first uh, post-election pullback. Uh, so if it comes in there again, and on top of that, you have uh, intersecting uh, support levels here, a trio of them, actually. You have uptrend line support. You can see this nice, well-defined uptrend line, that downtrend line. And again, the uh, price support that I mentioned below there. Uh, that next level up is if it takes that out, and this might be an area you look at for a stop below 263, somewhere around there. Let's just go back and see this downtrend line goes back all the way to uh, the beginning of 2014, actually. And that's the downtrend line I'm talking about there. And you can also see all the reactions back to the uh, left here in 2014 that I didn't show a minute ago. This is a two day period chart, so this goes back four years. But uh, there it is. So on a scale of 1 to 10, that's got to be right up there uh, as far as maybe an 8 or 9 or even close to a 10. As far as support levels go, you have a plethora of support, multiple support levels all coming into play. So you go along there with the stop not too far below. Like I said, this is probably your stop zone somewhere down below that level. And um, you know, upside targets, I won't even get there now because I'm talking the, uh, for these as long-term trades, recycling back in for the next move up. Uh, in the sector. CNAB, uh, let me go back to a daily chart. 
And this one's weird because it has this errant candlestick here that distorts the chart. And unfortunately, I can't get rid of that on this charting program. But uh, that one went right up into its uh, right about a little bit above. Overshot that previous reaction high. But this was a former target slash uh, resistance now support level that I had. We already came back in once on the post-election sell-off. There's numerous reactions to the left. And let me give you that level. Uh, you can just go to the last candlestick. The low was 86. And that level I have all the way down to about the 75 cent level. And if it takes that out all the way down to 44, almost 45 cents, there's very solid support down there. So if things get really ugly, uh, again, it depends on your trading style and how much room you want to give these trades. You can scale all the way down from you know, roughly current levels all the way down to 45 cents. I understand that's a 50% drop in the stock. But if you're playing long, you know, playing the long game on these, that's how you do it. And you scale in that's averaging your cost. Uh, but if you're swing trading, then you might want to wait for the charts to firm up because I can tell you this, they're in free fall right now. We don't have any buy signals other than, you know, com stocks coming up on support. But uh, so it's certainly a very aggressive entry here for a swing trader. But uh, and if you want to keep the stops a little tighter than what I suggested for these long term trades there that you can do that. For example, vape. Uh, this one had a nice downtrend line, took it out, broke out of the downtrend line, and just from the point of the breakout, I'm not going to play the game from the lows to the highs like I did before on some of those to just illustrate their moves, but just since the breakout, uh, that one went up 1,700%. Um, and now it's pulled back in uh, about 80, 81%. But it's right at uptrend line support, so that's an objective long entry there. And just below that, you know, somewhat, relatively speaking, around the 4.6% level, you have uh, another support level that you could use as a stop. If the stock goes much below that, it's pretty well defined. You can see back to the left here all the reactions. So there's one objective buy entry here with a stop not too far below. I should have the PPO up on these, the MACD doesn't do a good job with a lot of these stocks, so better use a PPO. I just flipped to a couple more. Kara, uh, Kara was you know one of my favorites, still is. This is a great, this is a long-term hold that I'm holding on to. Uh, broke out of this triangle pattern, and this one is is far from a pure play. It's a it's a bio, very small biotech company. I've talked about it in the past. Let me not get off on a tangent here, um, but it's not a pure marijuana play. They do have one drug in clinical trials. It is. Just uh, uh, based on marijuana, but the rest of them are all opiate uh, receptor-based painkillers. So uh, either way, you can see the levels there. If it comes back into 940 or so, we have a previous reaction high a little bit above that, 983, which we just kissed today. You can see if we zoom in, I put a line at the, the previous reaction highs if you look to the left. And that's about exactly where we pulled back to today. So there was an objective buy entry there. And you can continue to scale in. Here, I'll put a line there for you. And you can continue to scale in all the way down to this level. And at worst case scenario, and I don't see it happening. Uh, I mean, I can see the possibility of it, but it's not my preferred scenario. It would be a back test of the triangle pattern. In which case, that would offer an objective long entry with a stop not too far below. And then for a move up to that next target of 13.35 and ultimately 18.10 over time. Uh, can, C-A-N-N. -N, uh, looked like it was flagging. that That's foiled. That's really too big now to be a bull flag pattern. So let's delete that. Delete that. And just look at uh, simple support levels. So 280, roughly 283, 284 right there. We already hit that once on the post-election pullback. A great level at $2. That was a former price target as well as, you know, this level here. So I think a pullback to the $2 level if it gets there. But if it doesn't, you can start scaling in here around 283, 284. Scale down to that $2 level with a stop not too far below. There's a solid base down there around 120 that was taken out. We had a brief breakout there. But uh, you can see for a couple, about a, over a year or more, the stock was basing, you know, in this level here. So uh, ideal scenario, again, ideal buy zone on this one. Darn it, keep grabbing the wrong tool. Uh, would be this shaded box right here. So all the way down to that $2 level with a stop not too far below. All right, I'm getting a little long on this video here, and I still have a few more to go through. I'll do them quick. DEWM, very thinly traded, very low price. This is not two cents. That's two-tenths of a cent 
per share. Uh, so that is deep into penny stockville. However, there's a pretty decent support. Again, you guys can look into the fundamentals on these. I haven't looked into all the fundamentals on all of these companies. But uh, here's a stock that trades somewhat consistently with these downtrend line breaks. There's another downtrend line right there. It's already come back in to test the bottom of its support range over the last year or so. And uh, so maybe a break above this level takes us up back all the way up to that previous reaction high. With a stop somewhat below the bottom of that support zone, of course. ATTBF, uh, pretty well defined downtrend line. It even goes back to the left of this chart, which spans two years. Ran up. There was a resistance slash target level I had, which you can see was based off all these previous reaction highs right here. Pulled back from that level, and this one's held up relatively well so far. Uh, again, knock on wood, so far. This, the selling may or may not be over in the sector. Um, there's a support level there, if not. And if it takes that level out, that would be bullish the next time that goes. That's about, uh, call it 19 cents a share. ENRT. Uh, that one just broke below this downtrend line. That's pretty bearish. It had a wedge here, broke below. That was horizontal support and uh, up. I should say uptrend, not downtrend line, an uptrend line. And uh, there's certainly some levels on. <clears throat> there's certainly some levels on the way down. First one being about 2.2 cents a share. Uh, the 2.2 cent level. And then there's some about uh, the 1.8 cent level. Next support. Uh, but again, put in a divergent high, and it might have more to go on the downside. PHOT, ugly chart, very thinly traded, not big fan of that one. ERBB, down to support right now, very cheap, thinly traded stock. You can see these funky candles. Yeah, it took volume, and I warned it, warned about everybody about this. You know, they're great. And they're, they're, once they start taking a lot of volume, the spreads tighten up, and it's there's more liquidity in this stock. When everybody wants out, and especially once the volume dries up, then the liquidity uh is, is hard and then there's these bigger spreads between the buy and the the bid and the ask price so you can actually you know lose money just buying the stock and turn around selling at the same day even if it didn't go anywhere so you got to be careful with these thinly traded stocks if you don't know what you're doing stick with the higher price ones with a little more volume but uh there's one at support that's all i can say it's at support now next support level would be this downtrend line if it breaks that sgby uh, Signal Bay, well, you can see bearish rising wedge, negative divergence in place. Um, maybe it finds support on the wedge, maybe not. If it does, maybe another thrust up. Uh, wrong tool. Uh, maybe another thrust up here, uh, but it could still break that wedge. And if it does break the wedge, these are target levels. Uh, two cents a share, then uh, pretty decent support about the 1.27 or 1.3 level. Um, not one of my favorites, but there's some levels if you like that one. GRNH is one I liked, or, you know, I liked at the time, and I like it now. Um, coming down back to a, a great buy zone here. Let's try to grab the right tool here. Look at all these reactions back here on this orange line. You just go to the left of, of the chart, and you see numerous reactions from above and below. And that's at the 50, uh, 5 cent level. And we're almost there now. We reached a low today so far of uh 5.360 and i always like to start scaling in before so this is one you can start buying it here and have a stop somewhat below there uh, i'll actually tell you this the stop on this one would be an ideal stop right below this level and a, like i said a day leave and maybe a weekly close depends on how much room you want to give it how fast it's falling but uh, that's about three point eight three point nine cents a share you have a quite a few reactions even all the way back here uh so there's uh let me just highlight it for you and give you your buy zone buy zone is anywhere from about today's lows down to that level with a stop not below not too far below i should say cgrw uh downtrend line break boom downtrend line break boom uh, big that's really too big for a bull flag but that's sort of what that looks like there's a downtrend line sort of working its way down there uh, buy zone will be these green lines around the one dollar level and it's also nice that this one's taken out that one dollar share price and if it can maintain it that would be healthy so i think this one's a buy anywhere back to that one dollar level with a stop um, on a closing basis somewhat below the one dollar level MCIG, uh, downtrend line, boom, breakout. Downtrend line, boom, breakout. Uh, let's come back into support. So it's a buy right here for sure. Uh, you have support 
support resistance once broken tested resistance and although it, it sort of chopped through there that was due to this this tremendous velocity that's like lighting a rocket or almost you know lighting a bomb under a you know a rock or something just sends it flying up the momentum was huge so it carried it right through that level but there were some reactions around there it was just a big range and that again is what i refer to as momentum overshoots um, and finally it stopped but almost perfectly and this is technical analysis once again how it works with these guys you see this previous reaction high back here Look where that thing stopped, not once, but twice. And now it's come back into support. So this is your buy zone. It's a, Today it hit a low, looks like right around that support level. And let me give you that number. That is, I'll put it here for you guys to see, 10.5, uh, about the 10 and a half cent share level and support all the way down here. Now there's a big base. Again, I'm doing this video. I may not revisit these stocks for a while if things get really ugly in the sector and there's just no interest. But uh, this is really where the top of that basing pattern was. It based for a while here, had numerous attempts. And once it broke through this level, that was uh, that thing was off to the races. So if things get really ugly and you want to revisit these stocks in a couple weeks or a couple months, see if it holds this level and ultimately if the sector continues to firm up, then that thing would go a lot higher from there, and this would be your ultimate buy point, but you don't want to see it go much below there. Uh, AERO is up next. Well, this one looks like a rising wedge just waiting to pop. It's been fighting, struggling, had a few intraday breaks of this downtrend line, uh, but this one looks like it's ready to pop. It has negative divergence at that high. And, um, you know, these are levels along the way. Uh, just looking at the scope of that pattern, I would have to favor move down to about 293. May not go that far if the sector starts to catch a bid, but uh, if so, that's where I would look at buying that one, about 293, maybe a little bit north of that. All the way down to this level here, which is, let me give you that. 216 so 293 down to 216 with a stop not below there not too far below there i mean eaph target zone this was a target zone before it went up hit that next level here pulled back it's already hit the bottom of that target zone which back then that was a resistance zone now it's a support zone so we already hit it once another pull back to either the top or the bottom of that zone you don't want to go for a back test of that downtrend line that would just be too far below current levels i mean if you you know, uh, if that thing drops all the way back and it comes back and back tests it down here, that's another 74% drop. So I'd buy it in that target zone, maybe a hair above it with a stop not too far uh, below the recent reaction low, which comes in at about uh, 0 0.06 or 0 0.6 cents a share. Um, next one up, full. Mentioned this one, so financial. I don't know if it's trading anymore. Look at this candlestick. This this one may have been delisted or something might have went on there. Either way, if it if it continues, if there's something else going on and, and the stock hasn't been delisted or bought out, then look up for a pop over 274. But again, I'm looking at these. There hasn't been any trades in this one for a, a week or so here. CHUM, Chuma Holdings, uh, very thinly traded. Here's a downtrend line. I would just be more concerned not not to buy this one on a pullback. The volume's still thin. I would wait for a breakout above this these intersecting resistance levels, downtrend line, and uh, horizontal price at about 15 cents a share. CCAN, this one's at support, thinly traded. You can see these funky looking candlesticks. That just shows you there's not a lot of volume in that stock. But with that being said, it is, you know, at support. Um, but I, I prefer the ones with a little more liquidity and the ones that have moved recently. There was more action in. Last one, EDXC. I don't see anything in this chart I really like, so I'll just end the video here. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed.